Father, Lord, we thank and worship, Lord God, for everything we give glory, Lord God, God, even in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for the way you've spoken unto us, uh, Lord, through thy son, saying the joy of the Lord is our strength. And Lord, we will always rejoice in thy joy, and our strength will be renewed day and day in Jesus' name. Amen. At this moment, we want to listen to thy word title, What is Man? Father, Lord, we pray. You unravel the answer to this question. What is man? That the lingering in the heart of man, in the heart of their creation, human humanity, as the old men and women, boys and girls, that have been thinking, what is man? What is special in man? Why is man so unique? What is man? Lord, give us the understanding. Yeah. And make us to know the right perspective, the right manner to behave as a man after knowing this truth in Jesus' name. Yeah. Give us the grace yeah. to obey. Yeah. Thank you, Father Lord, for the answer. Yeah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I will thank the Lord for this moment. We are just talking about man, man, man. We study him, we say man, that a man, the crown of God's creation. Now we are talking about man. And the spirit of the Lord is going to flow mightily through me to expose and to reveal what is man. To reveal what is man. In the book of Psalm, chapter 8. Psalm, chapter 8, verses 3 to 8. Psalm, chapter 8. Verses 3 to 8. It says here, When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon, the stars, which thou hast ordained, what is man, that thou art mindful of him, the son of man, that thou visitest him, for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, the beast and the beast of the field, the fowls of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the path of the sea. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We see here that the psalmist was wondering and pondering. He said, When I consider thy heavens, look at the uh, first heaven we can see with our eyes, the sky. And look at the second heaven that we can see partially the sun, the moon, and the other two telescopes, and many other things, the vast galaxy. He said, When I consider all those heavens, even though I've not seen physically the third heaven, where God is, but the first heaven and the second heaven that I've seen in video, that I've seen on the uh, uh, pictures, that I've seen also physically the first heaven, the sky, when I look at them and compare them to man, I say, all these things are bigger and gigantic compared to man. And why is man so special? Even though these things are bigger than let's even talk of about the animals. Elephant and man. Who is bigger? Elephant. Jaguar and man. Who can run faster? Jaguar. You understand? Eagle and man. Who can fly? Eagle. Dolphin and man. Who can swim better? Dolphin. But what is special about man? See all creation all over. There are many that are faster, many that are slower, many that are better in so many other areas like swimming, flying, and things like that, and running. Yet man is so unique. What is special about man? He said, when I consider all these things, 
Then I wonder that what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him. Why is it that you are so concerned about man? You want to know whether he's doing things right. You want to know whether he's doing it wrong. You want him to give account of his life. You are account of what he's doing, how he's behaving. You just want to know everything about man. Why? What is man? What is what? Man. And that is why you want to look at it in three brief topic, uh, subtopics. One, the origin of man. The origin of man. Two, the fall of man. Point two is what? The fall of man. And point three, destination of the restored man. Destination of the restored man. The first point, the origin of man. When we talk about the origin of man, that takes us back to what? Genesis. It doesn't take us to what the scientists and some are saying about uh, some talk of evolution and things like that. No, it takes us back to what? Genesis. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. He said, so God created man. He said what? God created man in his own image. In, in, in the image of God created he in male and female. Created he then. You know, there is something God made here to make us to understand. Yes, God created man Adam first. But he said he also created Eve. That's why I read that 27 again. He says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he in male and female. Created he what? Then. Are we getting it? So, that this, he created man, he also created the woman. So, it's showing us clearly. That's why now we say them. You understand? So, uh, before that, the origin of man, man originated from God the Creator, who created him in his own image and likeness. In his own what? Image and likeness. In Psalm 139, Psalm 139, Psalm 139, give us some more detail of the creation of man. Psalm 139, verse 13 to 18. Psalm 139, verse 13 to 18. He <clears throat> said, For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. He's talking about how he was created. You understand? He was coming gradually. Gradually. God started putting others, putting others in place. Yeah, I'll read it again. For thou hast possessed me, um, thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's what? womb. I will praise thee. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am what? Fearfully and wonderfully made. Can you tell, say to yourself, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Say it and let the devil hear it. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. We understand. So, God made us in a special way. Which means each one of us, it took time to make each one of us. Because now he's talking of making the person in the womb now. You understand? 
not just Adam in the beginning, but now when you are being formed in the womb, he's saying how you were formed in the womb. You understand? So we especially need this person go take time. That's why the DNA of each person differs. And your fingerprint, no fingerprint in the world is the same. Because God take time to make each one of us. Are we getting it? So nobody can say, oh, you are not special. You are special. God took time designing you, fabricating you, creating you. Do you understand? So every one of us, we are special. Every one of us is what? Special. He went for that. He said, Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul know very well. Marvelous are thy works, and my soul know that very well. Verse 15. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret, and curiously wrought in the lowest part of the earth. Thy eyes did see my substance. Yes, be on perfect, and in thy book all my members were written. He said, in the book of God, in the creation, all my members, all part of my body, everything is written. I laid this one, how many inches, this one, how many diameter, you understand? He said, everything is written. He continued. He said, which is come a continuous with fashion. When as yet there was none of them. When as yet there was what? None of them. How precious also I thy thoughts unto me. He said, Before God can create me specially like that, fearfully and wonderfully like that, He has good thought of me. He has thought of it. You understand? So He said, How precious. Also, I have thought unto me, O oh God, how great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sun. When I awake, I am still with thee. So, now he's saying, when I'm sleeping, God is still thinking about me, he's watching over me. When I wake up, he's still with me. <laughs> you understand? So, I'm so special. Say it. I'm so special. God make us special. And we originate from Him. And He is the one that created us and we belong to Him. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the doors of the ground. And breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and man became a living soul. When he was created, all the other creations lion, tiger, crocodile, uh, whale, dolphin he didn't breathe the breath of life into their nostrils. You understand? But when it comes to man, he breathed the breath of life into their nostrils. That is his own breath. He breathed into us, which actually bring us into something very special. The idea that human being is a mixture of clay, molded from clay, but enlivened by the breath of God. Are we getting it? Capture that it captured that uh, paradoxical mix of earthly and divine elements. We have earthly elements, we have divine what? Elements in us. Dependence on God and freedom also because of the uh, earthly elements. You understand? That marks the human as unique. We are so unique. We are so what? Unique. And I thank God for making us so. So next time, 
when people are telling you about the origin of man and they are talking about evolution and saying uh, they are, uh, they are great great uh, uh, grandfather A, eh? you say that is that's not me. I was created by God. I originate from Him. I am partly LDE elements and partly divine elements. Did you understand? So God breathed the breath of life into me. I am a living soul. That still comes with any delay to second point, the fall of man. Because when God created us, we are we are like God. You understand? We behave like him, we think like him. But the fall of man. The fall of man means that man failed. Man did what? He failed in his God-given vocation, God-given job, God-given assignment, God-given commandment. Man failed. This is the meaning of Genesis chapter 3. If you read through in Genesis chapter 3, that Adam and Eve were seduced by evil, and the evil uh, was, uh, uh, was the serpent. You understand? Uh, who made them to believe that they could be like God by their own will, not by the will of God? You understand? That they could be like God by their own what? will and not by the will of God. Let's go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis. Genesis chapter 2 verse 16 and 17. He said, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil Thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. God already made man to know the fruit of this tree, uh, this tree of good and evil. God made him to know what it is. But he said, don't eat it. You understand? Because it's God that will make us to be like Him in His own way and by His own will. Not we wanting to be like God in our own way, in our own way. I will explain. That is, you want to have the power of God. You have the, uh, to have the thinking of God. But now you now use it the way you want. The devil, for example, he knows what is good and what is evil. But is he using it for good? No. Are we getting it? So that is what he wanted for us. The devil wanted for us. That's why uh, he seduced Eve and uh, Adam so that they will grab him by themselves without God's instruction and they lost everything. And what is the order of this fall? What is what? The order of this fall of Adam and Eve. We are going to look at the order. The order is that uh, the serpent instructed Eve by the sinner. The serpent did what? Instructed Eve by the sinner. Then Eve instructed who? Adam. But that's not the order God laid down. Was it A that Eve that's supposed to be instructing uh, Eve? No. The order God laid down was Adam was the one that's supposed to what? Instruct. Let's look at Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. Genesis chapter 2. Let's open to it. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. Because Adam uh, was the only one God gave that commandment. He's the one that now told Eve about it. Are we getting it? Because it's the one that's supposed to instruct. Look at it. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, 
verse 16 and 17. He says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely do what? Die. Then look at verse 18. So that you know, it was not yet created when God gave the commandment to Adam. You understand? And the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to act. For the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. Then if we uh, jump further to verses 22 and uh, 21 and me. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept. And he took one of the rib of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam uh, said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and be cleaved unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. So you see, Eve was not giving the uh, commandment directly. God gave the uh, commandment to who? Adam. And when Eve was made, Adam told Eve. You understand? Which is the right order. And Eve is supposed to now let serpent know, no, you cannot eat it. So you get away, Satan. But Eve instead allowed Satan, a serpent, to instruct her, no, if you eat it, don't know that you now be like him. Eat it is good. Then she now ate it. She now change the order and say, hey now, it is good that eating it. Did anything happen to me? Eat it too. <laughs> Are we getting it? Then all of them do what? Yeah. Anytime we change the order of God in the scripture, a fall is nearby. Are we getting it? Anytime we try to change the order of God, there will be a fall. And if you don't want to fall spiritually or in any way, follow the order God has laid down. Are we getting it? The moment we change the order, we miss it. There will be a fall. For example, if you put the cart before the horse, there will be a fall. You know, in those days, they use cart. You understand? The horse will be in front, they will tie the, uh, the cart to the horse. Then the horse will be pulling it. But now, if you now uh, put the cart in front, you now tie uh, the horse to the cart for the cart to pull the horse. There is a fall already because it won't work. Are we getting it? So we must follow the order of God. When we follow the order of God, there is always what? A blessing. Things will work out well. But when we change the order, things doesn't work well. It's like if you don't follow the manufacturer uh, manual in any product you buy, the product is about to malfunction. But if you follow the manual of the manufacturer, everything will fit in place. Uh, just like uh, this piano, uh, this uh, keyboard that is here, we see how the legs is. But if we change it and do it the way we want, not like the manufacturer, the way it is set, the thing will not set well. You don't understand? One side will be longer than the other. So it will like bend. And it will not be suitable to sit and play on. So, the fall of man. And that is why. In uh, Genesis, sorry, in Romans, Romans, <clears throat> Romans chapter 
3. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. He said, All have seen and come short of the glory of God. Because through Adam, we all sin. And not only that, many today are also going against the order of God. They don't want to follow how God say it in the scripture. Are we getting it? So God said, what? All have sin. Not following the order of God is sin. What was the sin of Adam and Eve then? They didn't follow the order of God. They didn't follow what? The order of God. And the Lord will help us. We follow the order of God and we will be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we go to the last point with tiny delay. Destination of the restored man. Let's just use Psalm 51. Psalm chapter 51. Psalm chapter 51. Psalm chapter 51. Here, here is the psalmist, King David. Who fell? Who did what? Who fell? He didn't follow the order of God. He fell into sin. Now, he's showing us the pattern to return to God and the destination of the restored man. I'll start from verse 1. We are reading to 13. He said, Have mercy upon me. If you are falling, you need to seek for God's mercy. And if you are not known God, you need His mercy also. You understand? He said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, plot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgression. He said, What? I acknowledge my transgression. I'm not making excuses. I acknowledge. I know I did wrong. I know I didn't do right. Lord, I acknowledge my transgression. No excuses. That is the way to receive forgiveness. That is the way to become restored. But if you are giving excuses, is it not because of this? The person is not ready for repentance. Are we getting it? So we get in it. So he said, I acknowledge my transgression and my sins is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sin, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaping in iniquity. He said, I was shaping. I was carved in iniquity. Since when? And in sin did my mother did what? Conceive me. I was born in sin. So he said, In sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desired truth in the inward part. That's why I'm not hiding anything, O oh Lord. I'm exposing all before you. Are we getting it? Thou desired truth in the inward part, and in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me. He said what? Purge me with Esau, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Look at verse 9 now. Hide thy face from my sins. Don't see them again. Forgive me and don't see them again. My self, I don't want to see it again. Let the devil not see it also again. Let the demons not see it. Let nobody see it again. You understand? He said, Hide thy face from my sins and plot out all my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart. This heart looks dirty. Oh Lord, create a clean one. Wash it and make it clean. A clean heart. Create me a clean heart. 
O God, and renew a right spirit within me. The spirit that is circled and, come, and, and I surrender, uh, surrounded by the glory of God, that the righteousness of God, that at the, at the, um, the oral of God, that anybody that comes to us will sense holiness, will feel holiness, creating me the right spirit, O Lord, within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O God. When I come begging, as I come begging, don't say no, 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 go away. I don't, I will not forgive you. No, don't cast me away, O Lord, from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. I am nothing without thy Holy Spirit. Help me that thy Holy Spirit will remain with me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. He said what? Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold a new spirit uh, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then, what is the destination? The destiny and the destined duty uh, for this restored man, for this restored woman, for this restored boy, for this restored girl. Look at verse 13. Then I will teach transgressors thy ways. That means if you are restored, if you are a child of God, what is your duty, your destined duty is to do what? Teach transgression on the way of God. Teach unbelievers the way of God. Teach backsliders the way of God. Teach sinners the way of God. Preach to them. Give them tracts also. Direct them in the way of God. Invite them also to come and listen more to the word of God. Teach, I will teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. And you will do that, I will do that, every one of us will do that. We start teaching transgressors the way of God, and start bringing sinners unto the Lord, and they will be converted unto the Lord, and we see more and more of them here together with us in Jesus' name. And as we say that every Sabbath day you will go with some trust and you make sure you don't come back with it, it must be delivered. It must be given to someone and you must speak to someone every week. Every week. Give trust out to people, talk to people, teach transgress all the way of the Lord. Teach them. Teach people close around you. Teach people in your workplace. Teach people at your uh, school or wherever you go, ah, you understand? Teach. Teach. He's calling every one of us to the teaching ministry. Teach. You understand? Teach adults, teach children, teach youth, teach young adults, teach everybody. It is now your destined duty to teach. And you will do it, and the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Mm. Restore back, slide down to the Lord, because this is the will of God for you and I. And as you do that, all other things will be added unto you. Uh, before we pray, we pray after, as we read this, uh, Matthew chapter, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. He says here, <clears throat> But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be what? Added unto you. Let's stand upon our feet and tell the Lord that, Lord, I will be a restored man. Restore me. I'll be a restored woman. Restore me. Restore me, O Lord, to you. And let the joy of salvation be my strength and be in me. And help me as from this moment I will start teaching transgressors thy way. I will start teaching transgressors thy way. Or oh, have you not been restored? Are you still lost? Or are you falling? You can tell the Lord, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, and restore me. And restore me. Restore me to yourself. Have mercy. Have mercy. 
and plot my sins away. Talk to the Lord. As for His grace, the grace to walk with Him, the grace to do His will, the grace for fellowship, the grace to reach out to others, the grace to live a transparent holy life. Tell the Lord, grant me thy grace. Grant me thy grace. Grant me thy grace. Grant me thy grace, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, Lord, we thank and worship Lord God for the way you've spoken unto us today. Showing us what is man. And you have made us to know that the man you are talking about is the man you created in your own image and your likeness. A holy man. A pure man. A man that fear God. A man that will breathe the breath of life into his nostril. A man that is made of clay and divine particle and divine elements which is the breath of God and Lord that is the man you want everyone to be holy righteous without blemish Lord I pray that we will follow the divine order that nobody will choose the order of God and bring the cards before the horse, but rather the horse before the cards. Help everyone to follow thy word as it is, and I'll choose thy word, so that thy blessing that you preserve, preserve for those that obey thy word will be ours in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank and worship the Lord God for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.